Zach Stone from electricalpereview.com. Thank you so much for joining me in this how to pass three part video series. So I'm not a fan of just reading off slides. You'll notice that all of my videos in the online course are by hand on the graphic blackboard. Unfortunately, this material, there really is no other better way to teach it except using slides. So bear with me on that. This is some of my older content. So you might find a couple of minor mistakes here and there but the advice is still solid. And also what's neat about this, I know most of you are electrical engineers, but some of you have sent this to some of your friends too. It doesn't matter if you're mechanical, silver, all of this still applies to each discipline. So really quick, before beginning the three-part how to pass the PE exam video series, I wanna talk about a couple of the key steps up front to make sure that we hammer them in. The first is there's two mindsets, right? The first is the successful student mindset. That's the student that's gonna do everything in his power and he's most likely going to pass. My goal for you at the end of this three-part video series is to get you as familiar with the successful student mindset as possible, that way it's ingrained in your mind. The other mindset is the unsuccessful student mindset. This is the student that he's either not trying hard enough or he just isn't familiar with all of these strategies available to him to do the best that he can. The unsuccessful student is a student that is most likely going to fail. So what are the two differences? The first is the successful student mindset says, I would rather risk studying too much, overstudying, and go into the exam room confident and get the highest score that I can and most likely pass compared to the unsuccessful student mindset that says, you know what, I'm just gonna study as much as I think I can, maybe a little bit here and there, and I'm gonna risk failing, right? That's not what we want. So the most effective strategy is gonna be an all or nothing very, very, very aggressive strategy. What does this mean? Well, there's four things in our control that we have that largely is gonna dictate how well we do on the exam. When someone passes the first time and someone else takes it three times and still can't pass, more than likely it's gonna be one of these four things, if not all of them, that they are just completely failing to do properly. So what are these four things that give us the best chance of passing the P exam? The first, in order of importance, the number one thing we can do to control how well we do on the P exam is how much time we put in studying, right? Time is the only resource we have that we can apply to learn the material well enough to get a passing score. So the number one thing is how many hours are you putting into the exam to study? And I try to be as blunt as possible here. I don't wanna sugarcoat it, I don't wanna handhold, we're all professionals, but it astounds me how many people think that they can go all week without opening a book, without reviewing a single problem, and then Saturday, wake up late, sleep in, have a nice breakfast, maybe spend extra time with their friends or family, and then Saturday night rolls around and they just don't feel like studying, so they don't. Sunday comes around, they feel a little guilty, so you know maybe they're gonna put in four hours, give it a good shot. Monday comes around, rinse and repeat. It amazes me how many people think that they're gonna pass the PE exam with this kind of laid back approach it's not going to happen. And the reason why I'm being as blunt and straightforward and honest with you as possible is because I don't want you to fall into this trap. So number one is how many hours are we putting in? Your study time is so important, it's so precious, you need to protect it at all costs. Honestly, if you're not putting in eight hours every Saturday and every Sunday and taking time out of your weekday to review what you learned on the weekends and to put extra time on those more difficult problems, then you're already heavily stacking the odds against you into passing. So I really want you to think about number one, the biggest thing we have under our control to affect how we do on the PE exam is how many hours we're putting into study. And remember, you can always study more in the beginning and study less towards the end as you approach the exam if you feel like you have a really good handle on it. But if you don't study enough leading up to the exam, when the exam comes around, it's too late, right? That time is already gone. So think about it, put in as much hours as you can in the very beginning, treat it like a second job, full-time job, take it as seriously as you can because that's the number one thing that's gonna reward you the most in the long run. Okay, we said there were four, so what's number two? So number two says, okay, we're putting in enough hours, but now what are we doing within that window when we study? What are we focusing on, right? If we just sit there and open a book, but we don't really work hard, then it doesn't matter how many hours we put in because we're not getting anything out of it, right? So number two is what are we doing during those hours? Are we getting out of the house to get away from distractions? Are we leaving our smartphone in the car or in a different room so we're not tempted to browse the web, check social media, or respond to a buddy via text message? 
Um, are we being very upfront and honest with the people of our life? Are we talking to our, our wives, our husbands, our kids, our coworkers, colleagues, bosses, friends? Are we telling them, hey, you're not gonna see me for a couple of months, but that's okay. And in fact, I need you to help me. Anytime you see me slacking, I need you to kind of give me a push in the right direction. Are we using things like the Pomodoro technique, which I spell out in this three-part video series to break the ice when we just can't get in the zone or when we have the engineering equivalent of writer's block, when we just, it feels like we're hitting our head up against the wall. It feels like we're not making progress. Are we making that extra cup of coffee? Are we getting up early every single day on the weekends? And are we really giving it our best shot? Are we really giving our undivided attention during those study hours to doing what we need to do most? So that's number two. Number three is our material. How many resources do you have to study off of? Of course, number one should be the NCEES sample exam because it's gonna be the closest to the exact verbiage and language that you're gonna see on the test. And then number two is how many different books and authors do you have that you can sample from, right? Every author, including myself, is gonna have their own idea of what they think is most likely going to be like the exam questions on the PE exam. However, it's really important to get a good variety of practice problems because the more you can expose yourself to different wordings and very small nuanced definitions, the more likely you're not gonna make a mistake come PE exam, right? Because two tricky things happen, either we confuse what the problem is telling us, are they giving us line values, are they giving us phase values, was it leading, was it lagging, was it a motor, was it a generator? And then on the answer, what exactly are they asking us to solve? Are they asking for the answer in per units? Are they asking it in amps? Maybe the units are already in kiloamps. Maybe they're asking for the phase values, not the line values. It's up to us to figure that out and solve it correctly if we want the right answer and we want to be correct. Next thing is our references. So it also astounds me how many people think they can walk into the PE exam with just the NEC and one reference book and they think they've got a high chance of passing. Now, it's not impossible. Some people do pass with just the very bare basics of books. But for those of you that have taken it before, you know that the average person at the PE exam lugs 10 to 15 books with them. Why is that? Well, a large part of the exam are the type of problems that just aren't easy to study for, right? Those are those way out of left field questions, those conceptual theory questions, definitions, the choose the most likely answer or which answer most nearly describes this question. And unless we have hands-on experience with that particular subject from our industry, chances are we're gonna need to use a reference book to find it. And electrical engineering, the industry that we're in, it is so broad, right? All of us spend a lifetime in our own individual fields, maybe becoming masters towards the end. So it's not easy to study and prepare for those questions that come outside of your field and your familiarity and your experience, right? So if we spend all of our time trying to familiarize ourselves with all the topics and all of the theory, guess what? There just isn't enough time to do that properly. So the only effective way is to have really effective reference books in the heat of the moment that we can turn to in the exam and find the answer. So I tell people every single book that you have, bring it. Don't be embarrassed. Don't feel like you're gonna stand out. I guarantee you, you're gonna see people with suitcases full of books, um, coolers with wheels full of books. I've seen people with mobile pop-up bookshelves. I'm not kidding. Bring every book you have. Take the time to at least go through the table of contents. Uh, you'll be very surprised. When I took and passed the exam for the first time, there was one book in particular I mentioned a lot. It's Wildy's book. It's by far my favorite. I'd never used that once when I was studying for the exam, but I must have answered at least five questions correctly by finding the exact match of a theoretical question or a concept question in that book. So number three is our resources and references. How diverse are the practice problems that we're studying off of so we can prepare ourselves? And how many different reference books do we have that we're gonna bring with us to the exam to have at our disposal to find those really difficult questions that frankly, you just really can't prepare for. Okay, next, the very last one, number four, our exam strategy. So number one, we talked about how many hours we're dedicated to studying. Number two, we talked about what we're doing within that time frame. Number three, we talked about our references and resources. Number four is combining all of that and what exactly are we doing on the exam day? When we sit down and we have that exam in front of us, are we just gonna do it from start to finish? Are we gonna give up when we have time left on the clock? Of course not, right? 
It doesn't matter if you have an hour left and you've solved every question that you can and you've already checked your work, you're gonna stick through it to the very end. I want you to. You're gonna use every single minute on that exam clock to go over any problem that you are even just a little bit unsure of, right? Every minute on that clock, that's our biggest resource when we take the PE exam because we have references at our disposal to check our work and we have different ways of solving questions to check our work. So that's number one. Number two, every question on the exam is worth the same amount of points and a wrong answer is worth the same as not answering it. So we don't wanna leave any questions blank, right? We want to eliminate any answers that we know are obviously not true, and we wanna improve our probability of our remaining answers. What do I mean by that? So if there's four answers, if we pick blindly, we have a 25% chance of getting it right. If we can eliminate one of those chances, we up our probability of about 33 point something, right? If we can then eliminate two answers, then we stand a 50-50 shot with the remaining two choices left. When we combine that with making an educated guess based off of our knowledge and our practice, we can drastically improve the likelihood of getting those questions right that we're not sure about. Next is time. Time is of the essence. There's two sessions. Each session has 40 questions. And each session on average, you have six minutes per problem. So what we don't want to do is we don't want to get stuck early on on the second or third question that pops up and spend all of our time on that question because before you know it, the proctors are going to announce you have five minutes left and you have half of the session left to go. So one of the most advanced taking tactics for the PE exam is you want to take the exam in multiple passes. What does that mean? Well, the first go around, you're going to open your book and you're just gonna go through and solve the most easy questions, the questions that you're the best at, the questions that don't require you to dig into your books, and the questions where you're really comfortable with the formulas. It doesn't matter if it's only five, 10, 20, it doesn't matter. You're gonna go through the entire exam from the beginning all the way to the end, answer the very most easiest questions. Questions you're not sure about, just shade them in lightly along the way, and the more difficult questions, don't bubble them in or shade them in at all. Next, we're gonna go all the way back to the beginning of the exam. Now we're gonna focus on the questions that we shaded lightly, the ones that we're a little unsure of, but we're sure we could probably solve if we put in the time to reference or check our work. So then we're gonna take our second pass from start to finish, going after those medium questions, get to the end of the exam, and then go all the way back to the beginning again. Now we're gonna attack those questions that we left blank that we just have no clue on, right? By now, a lot of the time has likely elapsed in the exam. Maybe you have 30 minutes, maybe you have an hour. But now the mindset is you have to think of it as what if this is the one question that's going to make the difference between passing or failing. That kind of increased sense of urgency will put a fire underneath you and make you work extra hard. You have to realize the amount of reference books that you're going to have with you, those answers that you don't know, they are in that book somewhere and it's up to you to find it while you still have time. So you need to attack, really attack those difficult problems and be confident that you can find them. And don't, whatever you do, don't let yourself give into the pressure and walk out of there early. You're gonna see people turning in their exam early, but you know better than that. You know that they're making a terrible mistake and you're not gonna make the same mistake. You're gonna take every minute looking up every question that you can, checking your work, looking for the using the negative sign wrong, looking for maybe leading and lagging, those nuanced details that cause students to lose a point that they really deserved to get right. Okay, that's about my quick crash course on the most effective way to prepare. Coming up next is the three-part video series on how to pass the PE exam. I hope you enjoy it. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to shoot me an email at zach at electricalpereview.com. All of this advice comes from me helping hundreds of electrical engineers prepare for and pass the PE exam every single year. And it's based off of my personal experience passing the PE exam the first time. I hope you like it. Good luck. Keep up the hard work.